By the way, everything I'm saying to you now, how long were you together? One year and three months. One year, three months. Yeah. How quickly, be honest, yeah. how quickly did you know it was wrong? Honestly, <laughs> really? Seriously. Seriously, since the beginning. Okay, very Ma'am. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and yeah, I'm back, but I've been under the weather to say the least. But here we are again with Matthew Hussey. I can't help, I can't help it. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Let's see what he has to say in this video. This area of your life. Uh, my question is, how do you get over somebody that you're not actually dating? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother actually, who here reads my brother Stephen's articles? Um, it's a few of you. He, he wrote an article. Is this a thing? I, I thought past like high school, maybe college level, like we're having crushes on people that we've never been with. We've never talked to, we've never interacted with, we don't have a chance to get with, or is it a, a friend maybe that doesn't want us? Um, this is a life skill that is learned, that should be learned pretty early in life. Um, and I'm not putting her down, but it just shows that I think a lot of us, especially in this social media age, are socially awkward and we don't understand true life skills. That includes me. I, now, I've never had a crush on somebody that I don't have access to. Like, it has to be reciprocal to me. But this just, I think this screams of modern dating, but I'll get more into it in a second. Which was really a wonderful title, How to Get Over Someone You Never Dated. It goes back to what it is you want to romanticize. Whether you want to romanticize someone from afar, or whether you want to fall in love with the reality of life. And I just, the days of me being able to get excited about someone who's not excited about me are over. I can't, I can't find the energy to get excited about someone who doesn't want me. If someone doesn't want me, it kind of, it kills it for me. It kills it. It's like, I know this person will make me so unhappy. So when we meet a guy, let me just say this, like, the, like for me, like, why isn't this a fundamental understanding? And, and I think it, it may be this trophy mentality that we, you know, we have now where everyone wins a trophy, everybody's a 10, everybody's a prize. Um, and as we see, this has been, this has been studied. This is fact. Okay. This isn't just a talking point. This is fact now. We know this, this has been studied. Okay. Social scientists have studied this. Um, that 80% of women want the top 20% of men on dating apps. They want a man, for the most part, on the dating apps for what he looks like. It is his, how his face is aligned. Um, his body uh, would be second. No, actually, I would say his height would be second. His facial structure, his height second. And then his body third. And that can kind of intertwine, intermix. It can kind of go up and down depending on the woman. But those three things is generally sexual attraction. Um, and it's lust. And it's a desire to have something uh, that you cannot. And rather than saying, you know what, that's out my price range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with something that's in my price range. Something that I can afford. Something that I'm able to attain. It's like me going to the uh, Lamborghini dealership and, you know what, um, I want that Lamborghini. But I can afford uh, a Volkswagen Beetle. But no, I, I am going to... Beetles may be expensive now, so I, I probably need to pick something, something cheaper. A, a Pinto, okay, from back in the day. So I, you know, I, I want this Lamborghini. How do I get over not being able to get a Lamborghini? How, how do I get over having to drive a Pinto to work? How do I get over not having a Lamborghini? There's nothing, like, do you see how insane that sounds? Like, we're, we're so entitled nowadays that we are having to get over things that were never ours to begin with, that we have no rights to possession, that we have no opportunity or ability to get with or to have. So now we need coping mechanisms, copium, in order to deal with things that are out of our reach. How, how do I deal with 
not being able to marry, I don't know, who's like a, a, a superstar? I, I can't even think of anybody right now. But let's just, I don't know. Uh, oh, that Latin scene. I don't even know who he is. Maluma or, or Christian Ronaldo or I, I don't know who's a Tyson Beckford or I don't, uh, Brad Pitt back in the day. Okay, we're just going in circles here. Don't clown me. But I'm just saying, how do I get over that Brad Pitt don't want me? How? How do I cope with Brad Pitt not in my DM? Yeah, now y'all can use that as a crying face instead of Michael Jordan. <laughs> but this is where we are. Women, we are needing our handheld so much. We're supposed to be bosses, divas. We can do anything. We're bad bees. But it's like... No one is teaching us like true life skills when it comes to relationships. What is going on? And we are in the beginning and the guy wants to show all the beautiful sides of his personality, values and life. And he's perfect and he's amazing. Nothing bad about it. So you fell in love. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> and then three months, four months after, the guy goes to the black side and everything <laughs> falls and then he's completely different and then he's treating you bad and then it just gets worse and worse and worse but you are there and you're already in love uh. two questions first how to recognize the traps like why who are you like how to recognize the guy who is really like his personality and everything second how to get rid of him when you are writing love. <laughs> I'm probably gonna say to you at the end of this little rant of mine, you should probably leave the guy. No, we broke up this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. But by the way, everything I'm saying to you now, how long were you together? One year and three months. One year, three months. Yeah. How quickly, be honest, yeah. how quickly did you know it was wrong? Honestly, <laughs> really? Seriously? Seriously, since the beginning. Okay. Very Ma'am, the way she, sp okay, the way she spent it, the way she spun it to us, I was thinking, okay, he did the classic covert narcissist. narcissist. Trust me, I have a lot of experience with this. When that mask comes off, Jesus, woo. Uh, we probably need to do a whole thing about narcissists. Um, I, I, I can give you some ooh, tea. But so there are covert narcissists who can, for decades, wear a mask. There'll be subtle signs, but until they decide to take it off, you don't see it because they're covert. Their entire life is built on wearing this mask and then and do, being good enough and then they just get tired of wearing it or they discard you and then they take it off. And so that is a totally different subject, which is what I thought she was going into. Um, and I thought it was, you know, love bomb. There's all types of things, signs that you could pick up on. But Sus went ahead and told us she knew from the beginning. So what, was he love bombing her for like two weeks and then it I don't get it. Like, so the way she phrased that question was though she was just disingenuous and quite honestly lied. She's, she's making like, it was so good. Then he just switched suddenly after all this time. No, she just admitted from the beginning, she knew it was wrong. Why did she stay? Why was she with him? Most likely because, you know, we are so stuck. This is where they've done a disservice to women, where we're so stuck in this fantasy, this fall in love pr princess, romantic notion of, you know, marriage and love. We, we have these, these ideals that have been bred into us, been programmed into us since childhood. And we, as women, will go for the man that gives us these feelings, these tingles, that, that makes us feel a certain way. Now, I, I get it. A lot of us were not raised in, uh, you know, in, in a great environment, in a home life that taught us certain things. Maybe we were neglected, abused, raised with a narcissist, raised with somebody with BPD, raised with, I mean, all types of issues come in. So this isn't a judgment because, you know, once you know better, you do better. And, and I raised my hand the highest, okay? But she knew outset that he was wrong, but something about him, she kept 
wanting to force the issue. And for whatever reason, she knew it wasn't right, but she went ahead and did it. And then she just lied. And she's making it like the man did all this stuff when she had aut aut autonomy in this situation, especially if it was from the beginning, like she just said. But let's, let's just, I'm just, poor baby. Very good, thank you for the honesty. So let's look at you. You stayed in it for a year and three months. Why? Because I, don't, I didn't want to be alone. Good. Thank you for wonderful honesty. So I didn't want to, yeah. I didn't want to be alone. By the way, what a great morning to break up with someone. <laughs> but Did that's it really, this thought. happened this morning. <laughs> All right, start getting sappy and whatnot at the end. I ain't got time for that. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. You guys leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this discussion. Also, check out my link to my Patreon. I'm going to be adding tons of videos over there. Um, that Patreon is going to be reserved exclusively for my um, uh, for my courses and really just me just showing you guys how I do YouTube if you don't know I have over a billion views on YouTube um, I've over five million subscribers different channels I took one channel my first channel from zero subscribers I mean zero views to a hundred million views within three months and I don't mean a hundred million cumulative it hit a hundred million uh, in the third month like 100 million views in 30 days, okay? So, yeah. So, um, so there's strategies and there's ways that I've, I've been studying uh, YouTube for about six years now, and uh, I just got my silver play button for this channel, if you don't know, um, and hoping to get to gold soon. And I just wanna show you guys how to develop a YouTube channel, how I, how I come up with ideas and concepts and things that tend to go viral pretty fast for me. It doesn't always work, but I generally have pr a pretty good check, not generally, I do have a pretty good track record on YouTube. So if you're interested in learning how to build passive wealth, I, I honestly, I don't know why anybody will start any other business other than YouTube right now. I'm, I'm just being honest. There's no overhead, um, the, the barrier to entry is low. Uh, and as long as you learn the skills, and, and honestly, it's a science. You have to learn the science of YouTube, okay? It's not about even attracting customers. You don't have to create a product in terms of selling something, but you are just creating, you're learning the science of it. And in fact, um, I'm going to be doing case studies of people who, you know, really beat the algorithm, how they gained the algorithm, and, and how you can too in your own niche. It doesn't mean you're going to get 100 million views in one month, but whatever niche you're in, you you can succeed. Um, and it's not just about a pretty face because uh, the channels that I did, for the most part, I never showed my face until years after. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think and check out the link. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>